What's going on, Infrendos? My name is Captain Alex, and you're watching a brand new episode of Nintendo DIY, the show in which I teach you how to make your very own super cool Nintendo themed projects right at home. Now, this is not just any episode, this is a super special episode because today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your very own Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch. Yes, this thing is setting the internet on fire. Everybody wants to get their hands on one. But I'm going to show you how you can make your own right at home with your own Nintendo Switch console for just $50 in supplies. So let's get right into it. All right, everybody. So if we want to make our own custom Animal Crossing themed Nintendo Switch console, we're going to need a few supplies, right? So the first thing you're going to need is an old pair of Joy-Cons, whether this is a new pair or a uh, a previously used pair, that's up to you. We're taking them apart so it doesn't really matter. You're gonna need the set of Animal Crossing shells, the left green, the right blue with the white backs. These are available on Amazon for $24.99. The link will be in the description below. Next thing you're gonna need is a dock cover plate. This one I'm using is white. Uh, you can use any color you want, obviously, but if you wanna make an authentic Animal Crossing looking switch, you're going to need a white one. Again, this is on Amazon. I believe it's around $19.99. The link will also be in the description below. And finally, you're going to need the dock art for the Nintendo Switch Animal Crossing Edition, which is Tom Nook with Timmy and Tommy on a desert island. Now, this is a custom piece of art. I made this personally, hand-drawn on my iPad, and uh, this is gonna be available on my website for free. Go ahead, check out my website. Go to the download section, the tutorial section. You'll be able to find this, download it, and uh, print it exactly the way you want it. There will also be instructions um, on the size that you need to fit the dock. It's like 6.81 inches by 4.09. Uh, that'll all be on the website so you'll know how to exactly print it to the right size. Now this is printed on sticker paper, but we'll get back to that later. First thing we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our Joy-Cons apart and start assembling the new shells. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take apart your old Joy-Cons and I'll show you how to do that right now. So. Pay attention closely. Um, they're pretty fragile on the inside, but they are doable. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. It's the easiest way, it's the quickest way. I've disassembled and reassembled thousands and thousands of Joy-Cons this way. So pay close attention and uh, just be careful and you will be absolutely fine. So here we go. First thing you're gonna need is a Y00 size screwdriver, also known as a tri-wing or a Y-tip screwdriver. Um, that's for the four screws on the back of each Joy-Con. So just go ahead, use your screwdriver, Y00 size, take those out real quick. All right, once your screws are out, just go ahead and push up. Uh, have it actually on its face down and push up and you'll be able to pull the Joy-Con shells apart just like that. Now, you're gonna now need a double zero size. So this is a regular Phillips head, double zero size, the plus sign shaped screwdriver. And just gonna wanna take these screws out. The first one is right here. That will disconnect this uh, slide on bar from the back of the Joy-Con shell. Go ahead and put your shell to the side and put your small screw to the side. So there's two side screws inside. There's a small one which is, you'll just be able to tell, it's a really tiny screw. And then there's one that's about double the size. It's a little bit more yellow in color, so you can tell them apart by the actual color of the screw as well. So I'll show you one of those once we pop that out. So go ahead and pull your battery out just like that. There's a screw right down here um, by the battery casing that holds the battery casing in place. So just go ahead and unscrew that. And again, all of these on the inside are just zero, zero Phillips screwdriver size. One up here. One up here. And then you can just pop your battery cover out and just carefully pull it back to the side. Now that you're inside, there's a few more screws. There's two on the joystick. Let's go ahead and unscrew those. There's two up here. One and two. And then that's it. Now everything will come out. Now just be very careful right here. Go ahead and pull your rumble motor out. It's gonna be stuck to your Joy-Con casing um, because there is double-sided stick tape on it. So go ahead and just be careful and pull that up. And once that's up, go ahead and take your IR sensor and pull that up as well. And then just carefully remove everything from the case. Now you've also, this is the right Joy-Con. On the right Joy-Con you also have the uh, Amiibo RFID reader here. Go ahead and pull that off. There you go, everything is off. Go ahead and take your left or right button off the top and just flip your Joy-Con over, take the buttons out, throw the old shell to the side and push your buttons out of the way. 
Now, this is a super, super untraditional way of taking a Joy-Con apart, but, uh, and I know some of you are cringing right now, but you can do this without ever taking any of the ribbon cables off, and this is how I do it. I've literally assembled thousands and thousands of Joy-Cons this way. It's perfectly fine. If the ribbon cables become disconnected, go ahead and reconnect them, but you can do it this way. You do not have to go through all the hassle of disconnecting each and every single ribbon cable. So go ahead and just carefully place it to the side. I'm being a little bit more violent than you should, probably should be, but uh, I'm just showing you guys that this is a way to do it without having to take apart every single ribbon cable, which is really, really tedious. All right, onto the left Joy-Con, same thing. Pull your casing apart. You're gonna have a screw in the exact same place here to remove your slide bar from the back shell. And just like that, it's off. Same thing down here, another screw for the battery case. And then this one's a little bit different. On the left Joy-Con, you've gotta lift up the battery and then you've got four screws in here. So the one in the top left and the bottom right, those two are yellow. These are the longer screws. And those will actually remove the casing from the Joy-Con. So that removes the case, and then the other two that are there actually remove the uh, internals from the rest of the Joy-Con shell. So we'll just remove that right there. Top right, bottom left, and just like that, that's gonna come out now. So now we have to remove these screws. These screws are for the R trigger and the uh, plus button, or I should say the minus button on the left Joy-Con. And we'll just remove that right there. Remove these two. And then once those screws are out, you can go ahead and lift this ribbon cable back. And now you have another screw. So this screw under here is now for the joystick. So we'll remove that. That will loosen the joystick for us. And now all of the screws are out of the Joy-Con. Again, rumble motor, lift that up, it's gonna be a little bit sticky, and now the entire internals come out of the shell. We'll place it to the side, dump out our buttons, and we're good to go. Put our shells to the side, and now all we've gotta do is the exact same thing, but in reverse. Now, I'm going through this quickly, I've done this a million times, but again, feel free to pause at any time you want. Take pictures of the inter internals of your Joy-Cons, because you don't wanna put screws in the wrong places. Um, like I said before, there are short screws and there are long screws. The short ones are silver in color. The long ones are a more brassy, goldish, yellow color. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see on camera there. Let me see if I can focus on it. Um, so this is the longer screw and uh, the silver one is the shorter screw right there. So you'll see them when you, you open them with the controller. So snap the picture. You'll be able to tell it where each and every single screw goes. Um, it's really pretty straightforward. So now again, we just gotta do the same thing in reverse. I'm gonna go ahead and put it together. We'll speed this video up and uh, you'll see it all get together. All right, so there we have it, our Animal Crossing uh, mint green and light blue Joy-Cons with our white backs. These are our replicas. Obviously, this is a pretty darn good replica. I mean, if anybody saw you playing your Nintendo Switch with these Joy-Cons, they would think that these are official Animal Crossing Joy-Cons. They would have no idea that these were handmade. And you can do it so simply, like I just showed you. It's really, really not that complicated to take joy quads apart. Of course, you have to be patient. You have to uh, be a little bit gentle with your joy cons, but otherwise, it's really not a hard process. It's not as complicated as a lot of people make it seem. Uh, there's a lot of ribbon cables, but you don't have to take them apart. Like I showed you, you can leave them connected and they'll be perfectly fine. 
So there you have it. That's how you make your own Animal Crossing Joy-Cons. Now let's go ahead and see if we can make the Animal Crossing dock. All right, so with our Joy-Cons out of the way, we're gonna move on to our dock, and this one is really super simple. Like I said, this graphic was designed by me. I hand created, or should I say, I hand recreated the official dock art, and uh, we have it right here. It's gonna be available on my website, captainalex.com. Go ahead and click the link in the description below on YouTube, and you'll be able to get it as well. What you wanna do is get a white faceplate. Uh, if you don't wanna buy a separate faceplate, you could take yours, take your dock apart, spray paint it white, spray paint it any color you want, um, and then the next thing you need is just some sticker paper. So this is from Amazon. This is some really, really good sticker paper. And this is a clear gloss. So I went with a clear gloss. Um, officially, the Animal Crossing dock is more of a matte. So if you wanted to get a clear matte sticker paper, you can do that. But this brand that I'm gonna link in the description below is really, really good. Um, so this is what I had on hand. I didn't wanna buy matte just for this one project. So I have the gloss on hand. I'm using the gloss for this project. But like I said, you can use matte. You can use solid instead of clear. Um, Totally up to you. Just check out the uh, manufacturer that makes this specific paper because it sticks really well. It's pretty much permanent once you put it on. It is not coming off. This sticker paper, this label paper is incredible. So get this brand that I am linking to and I promise you will not be disappointed. Really good stuff. You're gonna wanna print it on the highest quality that you can, that your printer allows. And then go ahead and cut it out. I used a, uh, a machine cutter to cut a border around this sticker. You can cut it by hand with scissors. You can use a paper cutter if you have one on hand. Um, but yeah, super simple. All we're gonna do for this part is peel back our sticker from the sticker paper and stick it right on there. All right, now we got our sticker, and as you can see, like I said, this is the clear translucent paper, um, and it is gloss. So I use the clear one, but when we put it on a white background, it's gonna show really crisp colors. So that is exactly the effect that I wanted it to be. So uh, that's why I use the clear translucent. So we're just gonna line it up with the bottom and try to line it up in all the corners. We want this to be as precise as possible, so I'm just gonna lean in real close here. Right about there. And then we're just gonna smooth out the wrinkles. So we wanna obviously get all the bubbles, get all the air out of there. And then if you have some type of old credit card or something, you can do it even better. So let me just grab a card real quick. Just take the card and smooth out all the bubbles. And as you can see, as you smooth out the bubbles, the colors become a lot more crisp, a lot more clear once that airs out from being trapped under there. All right, so there we have it. Most of the bubbles are out now. And now we can just take, there's a little bit of excess plastic up here from the sticker. So we could just take our X-Acto knife and slowly but steadily go around the edge to just trim that plastic back and make it a nice smooth finish. All right, and there we have it. Once our edges are smoothed out, we've got our dock cover. Now we've just gotta go ahead and disassemble and reassemble our dock. All right, so with our front faceplate of the dock completed, the next thing we wanna do is put it on our actual dock. So we're gonna do that right now. Now the first thing we need to do is obviously open it up. Now the dock is a little bit complicated. So we're gonna follow along, just pay attention, pay close attention here because even I get a little bit confused sometimes doing this. I haven't worked with the dock a ton of times, um, but we'll go slow and we'll get through it together. So let's do this. So on the back, you're gonna to wanna to open up the uh, cover plate, the, uh, cov the plate for the cables, and you're gonna use your Y screwdriver again, and just gonna take out all these screws here. All right, so once the screws are out, obviously, very simply, we're just gonna go ahead and lift this part up, and there we have it. That is the extent of our dock. So I know you've probably seen it before. If you haven't, here it is. 
People talk about it a lot. This is the entire dock. They charge 80 bucks for this thing if you buy one separately and it's a microchip or a, <laughs> not a microchip. It's a board smaller than a uh, Nintendo Game Boy SP. So that's it. That is the entire dock right there. There's nothing over here. There's nothing under here. There's a ribbon cable that connects to where you uh, insert your dock, your switch into the dock, and that's it. So next thing we gotta do, switch out our head on our screwdriver, go back to a regular Phillips head, and we wanna unscrew the rest of the screws here to just detach these parts. And of course, the next thing we wanna do right here on there is there some clips, so let's go ahead and bend that back. Okay, once that's out, go ahead and just gently, you're gonna to have to remove this ribbon cable and just lift that up. And then over here, this is our dock light. So this tells us if uh, something is plugged in or charging. So we can just pull that out real quick as well. Just like that, it just unplugs and it plugs back in later on. So there it is, that's the entire Nintendo Switch dock. Very fancy, not a ton to it. So we'll just put that to the side. <clears throat> now once that's removed, there is another screw here. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove that screw. And then there's also some screws. Now these ones are harder to see, um, but there's three holes here, one, two, three, and another three holes here, or actually, sorry, it's only two on this side, another one, two here. So you're gonna need a longer screwdriver. I don't believe this one fits, so I gotta go get another tool um, with a longer neck on it. So same thing though, it's a regular Phillips head screwdriver, small, just zero size, and uh, it'll fit right into those holes. All right, so with a long neck Phillips screwdriver, I'm just gonna do the same thing, go ahead and Stick it down each of these holes and just loosen those screws. And then you could just flip it over and dump those screws out. And we'll do the same thing on this side as well. Underneath this ribbon cable, there's a third screw in the hole. We'll dump that out, and there we go. Pops off nice and easy, just like that. Now, this part is the front of the dock, obviously, all right? So now what we need to do is lift this up. That comes out, this slides off, just like that, and there it is. That's the entire front face plate of the dock right there. So. Go ahead and take out the light, take out the plastic bit of the light. Just like that. And we can go like this, and we're gonna wanna insert the plastic piece into the new dock over here. All right, so now what we gotta do is just work backwards. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this piece into the new back plate, like that. Just like that, take this, it just hooks in just like that. All right, then we want to take our dock like this. And what we gotta do is we gotta get our ribbon cable through the hole in the bottom there. Um, we also want to put our dock light back in first. So there's a very, very small light diode on there. Uh, I probably can't even see it. Let's see if we can focus on this real quick. That's a light diode, so you just wanna make sure that that part is the part that faces the piece of plastic because if it does not, obviously you are not going to be able to see it. All right, so I played around with the dock a little bit off camera because like I said, I haven't worked with docks in quite a while, so I couldn't exactly remember how to put it back together. Uh, it was a little bit more complicated than just taking it apart. So what you wanna do, the easiest way to do this is put this back plate on, slide this part in, and make sure it's clipped in place. So now this is solidly on here together, okay? So it was a little bit loose before, which is why I was struggling with it. Um, so put this back plate on first, that just clips into place. Clip this on, make sure that's secure. This is really clipped in there well. <clears throat> now we wanna take our 
uh, other part of the dock and of course we're going to slide our ribbon cable through the bottom right corner as well as our um, light cords slide that through there so probably the easiest way to do this is just put the dock uh, face plate face down and just take the dock like this insert the ribbon cable there's that make sure you just hold the ribbon cable in place while you adjust and get this cable through as well. So there we go. All right, now with both of those in there, what you wanna do is now make sure that this part slides into this part. So you've actually got to adjust it properly so that this kind of hooks into it. So it's gotta be like that. If you can see that, it's a little bit hard to tell, but it needs to hook up into it. Uh, make sure your ribbon cables are hidden, and there we go. It hooks in just like that, and now it's in there. Now everything is hidden, all the cables are hidden. Now we just need to go ahead and screw it together. So again, just place it face down, take your long screwdriver, find your six screws, if they were strewn about like I did with mine, <laughs> and just screw all the screws back into place. All right, with all of our screws in place, our front plate is solidly on there. That is not going anywhere, that's there to stay. So there we have it, the white front of the dock with our new Animal Crossing design. And we'll go ahead and now attach our ribbon cables and our uh, dock light. So we'll plug the dock light in first. That just plugs right in, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, let's see, make sure I got this the right way. Just like that. So that plugs into there, snaps into place. We'll go ahead and put this down here, clip our dock back into place, and now we just want to insert our ribbon cable up here. Our dock is in place. We can go ahead and put some screws back in place as well. So we've got a screw here, and we've got a screw here. Go ahead and screw those in. Now we'll take our cover plate, open it up again, slide that right into place right there, and replace all our screws. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Um, there are some longer and shorter screws. Now the longer screws are going to go in the parts that are longer. So up here, we're gonna put our four longer screws, and then inside we've got our four shorter screws. And again, these are the Y-type screws on the outside. So we will go ahead and put our Y-type screws in there. And there, <laughs> and there we have it. Our Animal Crossing New Horizons Nintendo Switch is complete. We've got our white dock with our Tom Nook and the Nooklings and we have our mint green and seafoam blue Joy-Cons with their white backs, just like that. Next thing we gotta do is just grab our Switch tablet and put it all together. Slide our Joy-Cons on. And just like that, we've got a pretty faithful Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch replica. So there you have it, the Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch console that you can make at home with just $50 in supplies that you can buy right on Amazon. What do you guys think? Now obviously there are a few things missing that the official console doesn't have. We didn't customize the back plate today and the back of the dock is still black where on the official one it's white. If you wanted to make the back of the dock white, just a can of spray paint in some white color and a little bit of clear coat would be perfect for that. It's not really a high traffic area so you don't really have to worry about ruining uh, the paint job on it because you're not really gonna be hands-on with it. So a little paint, a little clear coat, and you can make the entire dock white if you want, but that is totally up to you. I decided just the front face plates because if you put it on your TV stand just like that, you're really not gonna know that the rest of the dock is black anyway. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Nintendo DIY, and I will see you next time. Captain Alex, signing off.